the Honda Ridgeline, Honda's successful entry into the mid-sized pickup truck market, and being the second generation, I personally think that this is the best looking one yet. However, just like all great success stories, it's not always as smooth and as easy as it appears. Here are my top 10 issues with the Honda Ridgeline. Let's get started. So number one is the location of the oil filter. If you go right here behind the wheel, you can see that it's right above the frame and this control arm. And when you remove that filter, the oil goes everywhere, down onto the control arm, over here underneath this plastic pan, and it's just a mess. And so I think that this location is probably one of the worst things that Honda could have put. I know that they had to figure out a place to put it, but they should have engineered probably a better location because it is just so messy when you're dealing with the filter. Number two is the ground clearance on the Honda Ridgeline. It's 7.9 inches tall, and when you have running boards, it makes for traversing and getting over stuff a little bit difficult, and so people who actually do go off-road and actually wanna use their truck for that purpose will have a little bit more of a challenge in that segment. So having a truck, I feel that you should have something a little bit taller off the ground. It'd be nice to see maybe another two more inches on the Honda Ridgeline to make it a little bit more capable off-road. Number three. Honest towing capacity. All wheel drive models have 5,000 pounds and front wheel drive models are limited to 3,500 pounds. So in the case of this trailer right here, this dry weight is 3,500 pounds being that it's a dual axle. So that immediately eliminates all front wheel drive models and pushes the all wheel drive models over 50%. So it would be nice to see if Honda was able to push this towing capacity to 6,000. That would make it more realistic in terms of opening up the doors for things for people to do like towing this trailer safely and actually loading it and so that would be something that'd be nice because the specifications obviously 5,000 pounds if you go over that this truck is capable of doing it however you'll be risking uh, damaging your vehicle so increasing the towing capacity would be something that i think hana should definitely try and do if it's possible all right so some of you guys may have seen some of my other videos where i put the hana ridgeline to the test I towed across America with 5,000 pounds, and that brings me to number four, the transmission cooler. The Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive models come with an upgraded transmission cooler over the front-wheel drive models. However, in my testing, I simulated quick driving speeds, low driving speeds, uh, with and without cruise control, and I didn't see much of a difference with the higher temperatures on the transmission. So the scan gauge two that I bought was telling me my readouts, and I think I seen as high as like maybe 270 degrees where I had to pull over and have the vehicle cool down. And so Honda should really think about potentially adding either a larger transmission cooler or making a hybrid so that it can take on some of that load and reduce the stress on the engine. Alrighty, number five is the navigation system. Now, this is a good navigation system and it is currently up to date. However, when compared to Google Maps, it is subpar. Google Maps is estimated one hour and two minutes when it is estimated one hour and 18 minutes to my destination in Tennessee. And I go there frequently for family, so it's just giving me an alternate route that is not as quick and potentially adding more miles to my drive. So that is just something that I've noticed every now and there. It's a hit and miss with this system. Sometimes it's good, but many times it'll take me the long route as opposed to just cutting straight through. So that is something that I'm not 100% fond of, but it will at least accurately get you to your destination. All right, so number six is the cruise control. As you guys can see, I have it set to 55, but for some reason, the Honda Ridgeline always suffers to maintain that cruising speed. And you can see that it's dropping as low as three miles off from the designated speed. That's a big issue for the Honda Ridgeline, and I don't know why it's doing that. Number seven is the lack of aftermarket parts for the Honda Ridgeline. So if you look at the competition, such as the Toyota Tacoma and the Jeep Gladiator, there is a significant amount of support in that community. The Honda Ridgeline, however, does not share that same support. You're limited to pretty much whatever the OEM is giving you as an option, and then a couple of random guys out there who are building parts to support the Ridgeline. So, unless if you have capabilities like I do to build yourself some brackets, you're gonna be limited to whatever's off the shelf in that small pool of people who are manufacturing, and you're not able to express yourself or build your Honda Ridgeline to support your lifestyle. So that's a negative for the Honda Ridgeline. Okay, so coming in at number eight is the tailgate. Now, Honda has the wonderful dual action tailgate, but however, because this is a very heavy tailgate, 
and when my son tries to come over and open it, I have to stop him because there is no dampening and I'm afraid that that could cause some serious injury. So I don't know if Honda can improve this because most of the stress goes onto one pivoting point. So it's just something to be aware of and something that I'm not a big fan of. So number nine is the Honda AC. As you can see, I have everything on low, AC is on, recirculation is on as well, and it is blowing cold air. We can check and we're at 58 degrees. However, it doesn't feel cold in the vehicle. It still feels warm. I don't know if it's just me, but my Honda Ridgeline seems to not have either good circulation in the vehicle to keep that cold air moving and cooling the vehicle off quickly enough, but it eventually does get cold. It's just not to par with other vehicles in this segment. So it's a big negative for the Honda Ridgeline because I do live in Georgia and it gets really hot and I kind of wish that it was able to cool down the vehicle quicker. All right, so here we are at number 10 and that is that the Honda Ridgeline is missing some key features that are not available in the United States market but are found in Canada. Those features would be the ventilated front seat, power folding side view mirrors, the rain sensing wipers and heated rear seats. These are some significant features that I feel that a top of the line trim such as the RTLE and the black edition here in the US market should have. However, they were never added in the US market. So maybe Honda will eventually bring those into this market and that would be a significant upgrade for the Honda Ridgeline for future models. Currently it's not available for 2022, but maybe for 2023 those will be options that are available. So we'll have to see. So these are my top 10 dislikes about the Honda Ridgeline. Hope you guys enjoy this video. And I'll see you guys on the next project.